Welcome to today's video. We're going to work on the recovery for Digital Century. Last week, you might remember that we walked through the process to create a recovery for Digital Century. Now we're going to show you how to use that recovery. Now, before we actually run the recovery, there are a few things we want to do. Primary to that is we want to create a database backup. Now, to do that, we're going to go into Programs, Pelco. From Pelco, we're going to go to DS Backup. So with DS Backup open, there's a couple of things we want to take note of. We do not want to change the license file location or the script file location under Archive and Restore. That's very important. The only one we want to change is under archive location which is the first option we click browse and then if you notice here we don't have a folder yet created so we'll just quickly go over to desktop right click select new from new select folder now with our folder created we're going to name it db backup v7.18 we're going to include the version which is very important because we can run a recovery that is an older version Running a recovery with an older version is okay. We don't always have a USB recovery for the most recent version. So sometimes the system must be recovered to an older version and then updated to the most recent. Now why this is important, if we recover to an older system using a different version of SQL, it is possible a database mismatch will occur. Users can be lost, permissions for the users can also be lost. By naming the folder, the version we have, this allows us to know we need to upgrade the system to that version before we restore our database backup. Now with that aside, we click Browse. We now select our newly created folder and click OK. Once we've done that, we click Archive Current Settings. Now once we click that, the DS Backup Utility will automatically stop the services and load the backup into the selected file. Now do take note, because we are stopping services, this does stop recording. Once it's loaded the backup into the specified location, it will automatically start back up the services. You may notice that the window goes to not responding, but don't panic, it's doing what it should. Once it's done, you'll see it comes up and says current status, archive complete. This lets us know that our database has now been safely stored. So getting our database is only the first step before we run a recovery. The next thing we want to do is document our camera settings. Now if the site already has a master document that details camera name, IP address, and location, this step is not necessary. However, if the site does not have that information, we can get it using reports available in DS Control Point. Once DS Control Point loads, we'll go to Setup and then Digital Century Reports. We'll accept the default location. We'll accept the system. Now at this screen, we want to select Configuration Report and then click Next. Then we want to click finalize. This will generate our camera configuration report. With the configuration report now done, we can close DS control point and see it's available on our desktop. In this example, I decided to do it as a PDF. However, HTML is also an option. Now the configuration report tells us the IP of the camera, the picture of what the camera is looking at, the camera name if it has been changed from the default, as well as the motion settings. Using this report, we have a full picture of all cameras connected to the system. 
So now we've captured both our database backup as well as our camera configuration report that gives us the name of the cameras, the IP address, and the motion settings. Now we're going to capture our license key by going to Start, Programs, Pelco. From Pelco, we're going to go to License Key Entry. Once the license key entry is on the screen, we're going to go ahead and save that information. Now there's several ways we can save the key present here. We can write this down. We can take a picture of it with our phone. Here, I'm going to go ahead and use the Windows Snipping Utility to capture this shot. To do that, we click Start. In the search bar, you want to type in SNIP, SNIP for short, and then hit Enter. This will automatically run the snipping tool. Then we'll simply select the area of the screen we want to capture, in this case, the license key entry screen. Once we've selected it and release, it'll give us the option to save it. Here, we want to go ahead and click Save As. And Save As, we'll go ahead and make sure it's set to Desktop. And then we'll name it. In this case, we'll call it DS License Key. Once its name's been entered, click Save. Now we have our license key, our backup, and our camera configuration report. Now we're going to package this all in one folder. We're going to name this DS Backup, and then we're going to give it a date. This lets us know when this backup was done. Now with all our files ready to go, we're going to select all three and then move them into our newly created folder. Now because this is a recovery, this is going to destroy the information on the system. So we want to send this folder to our USB drive. If there's another network location or if there's another storage method you would prefer, the file can be sent there. The important thing to remember is to make sure we remove it from the desktop. Now with all of our files saved and secure, let's hop in to the recovery process. This recovery is for a DSSRV2 JBOD. Once we insert the recovery USB into the system and reboot, we're going to be presented with this screen and the following three options. Restore OS only. That is only going to restore the OS partition, meaning it will leave your data intact. Option two is restore system to factory default. This will completely wipe the system back to default just like you pulled it out the box. This is used when systems are going to be transferred that contain highly sensitive information or if the system is going to be decommissioned and used as a backup system. Now let's take a look at what this looks like if we're running a RAID system. As you can see, we have different options. The first one, convert all disks to single. This will take a RAID system and convert it back to a JBOD system. Now this does destroy all data, so if this is performed on a system that has been recording, all video will be lost. The second option performs the same as in a JBOD system where it only restores the OS partition and it leaves everything else in place. The last option, convert all disks to RAID 5, will delete all data and take your JBOD system and make it a RAID 5 system. Once the recovery is finished, we'll be presented with the Windows 7 Ultimate screen where we select the country or region, the time, and the keyboard layout. Once we click Next from the Windows 7 Ultimate language selection, we're now presented with the PC name screen. We want to make sure the name is the same as the previous system. By default from the factory, we name the system the serial number. If the site has changed that name, make sure to input that here. After we click Next from the PC name screen, the next screen will be the product key screen. The Windows product key if you're facing the NVR, can be found on the upper right hand side of the lip of the DSSRV or DSSRV2. After clicking next, 
from the Windows product key, the Windows license agreement terms appear. Make sure to check mark accept and click next. Once we click next, from the Windows license agreement, the next will be to confirm the zone, date, and time. Make sure to verify they are set correctly for your location. After clicking next from the date time screen, we'll now be presented with our network selection. Select the appropriate network location for the site. Once we click next from the network selection screen, it'll now bring us to our Windows login prompt. The default password for a digital century system is DS service user, all one word, all lowercase. This will complete the recovery process for the DSSRV2. Now let's talk about the DSSRV1. The process is identical to that of the DSSRV2 with the few exceptions that we're going to look at here. The first one being the DSSRV recovery must be run in the same system that it's going to be used in, meaning we can't take a hard drive, run a recovery on it, and move it to another DSSRV. That will cause issues. The second is, based on if it's JBOD or RAID, the boot order is different. If this is a JBOD configuration, UEFI USB flash drive must be selected. If it is a RAID configuration DSSRV1, then USB, USB flash drive must be the first boot. This is important as not setting this correctly will prevent the recovery from running. Once those have been selected, the process is the same, yet with one exception. On a DSSRV, it will also check the RAID firmware. If the RAID firmware isn't at the latest version, the USB drive will automatically update it to the latest. The process is now the same as a DSSR V2. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please remember to like and subscribe. And remember, at Pelco, we've got it all covered.